Hello and welcome. Today I'm presenting the IT recruiter. As an IT recruiter, what do I care about? What do I want to see? As an IT recruiter, I'm not 100% technical. I'm not a programmer. I'm not an administrator. I'm not a cybersecurity specialist. Uh, I'm not a cloud admin. Uh, but I'm supposed to hire for those jobs. My job is to vet the resumes, to look through all the resumes and pick the good ones and take it to the hiring manager. What am I afraid of? I'm afraid of taking a resume for a Java developer or for a Salesforce administrator or for an Oracle you know, specialist ERP system. I take it to a manager. The manager interviews that person and says, you're stupid. You just wasted two hours of my time or an hour of my time in this interview. This person is not qualified. So what do I have? I have a list of questions and I have a scoreboard with me. I'm going to ask you a few questions to make sure that you're qualified, even though I'm not technical. So I have my checklist of Here's what's needed in the job. Are you qualified to do those things? Also, I'm looking for certain things. So let me share my screen to show you what I'm looking for when I'm interviewing you. As an ID recruiter, here are some of the things I'm looking for. In every answer, as you can see in line 15, in every question that I ask you, I want to see, are you qualified? Next, I want to see, are you interested in that job? Then, are you technical enough? Number four, are you committed? Number five, are you confident? So every time you're answering a question, I want to see, are you qualified for that job? Are you technical enough for that job? This job requires you to know one, two, three, four. Do you know one, two, three, four? We don't need to get very technical with me, the recruiter, but we need to make sure that you are saying, yes, I have experience in this area. Yes, I know this. Yes, I've worked with this. So I want to make sure that you're qualified, you're technical. Secondly, are you interested? And I'll give you an example of the difference between interested and qualified. For example, I'd love to I'd love to do a heart surgery. You know, I'd like to walk into to a hospital and, and, and do a heart surgery. But am I qualified? No. Am I interested? I'm very interested. I'd love to open up someone and do a heart surgery. So very interested, but I'm not qualified. I'm not technical. I haven't been to medical school or I'm not a cardiologist. Now, suppose that I'm a cardiologist and you meet me in the elevator Monday morning. The weekend is just over and say, Good morning. And I say, oh, man, I can't believe it's Monday again. I wish it was Friday. I wish it was the weekend again. So I'm very qualified, but I'm not interested in my job. I don't enjoy my job. So in every question that we're asking you, we want to make sure that you stay with this company, the offer that we're going to give you for years and years to come or as long as the contract is. So we want to make sure that you're qualified, you're technically strong, and you're interested in the position. So an example of qualified is, have you worked with Oracle. Yes, I've worked as an Oracle administrator. I've done, you know, database optimization and security and patching and upgrading. And okay, so I'm qualified. But am I interested? Now I need to add things to make it sound like I'm very interested, such as saying, and this is why I'm so qualified for this position. And I would like to work on this position. I would like to get this offer. I would like to use my, my what I've learned and my experience in this position that you have available. So I'm showing that I'm qualified and I'd like to take it and work with you guys. I'm also showing that I'm interested. So that's one of the things we're looking for in the interview. The next thing we're looking for is confident. Confident, we're looking for this person. Is this person, you know, uh, the way they speak? Again, most of the time it's through the phone. Sometimes it's through Zoom. Does that person sound confident? Do they sound sure about their answers? So somebody that answers the question by saying, well, you know, uh, 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 I have uh, worked. I, I, you know, one time, uh, I, I can't remember exactly, but it was. So you could be very sharp, but if you talk like that with hesitation and you don't remember what it is and so on, it doesn't show a lot of confidence. If I put that resume in front of a manager, I'm afraid the manager is going to chew me out. So I probably won't put your resume. I'll probably put the resume of someone else. In paper, they might have less experience than you, but they just spoke fluently. They're like, well, I worked in this and I did this and I really enjoyed working with this. And the way they speak shows that they're more confident. So the way you speak, confidence is a big thing. So I'm going to ask someone on an interview some questions, and every time you're going to keep your scoreboard with me, and you're going to say, are they qualified? Are they interested? Are they technical? Are they committed? means they're going to stay a long time. Does it sound like they want this job and they're going to stay there for a long time or not really? And then confident. All right. So let's enjoy the trip together. Hey, hello, and uh, welcome to joining us uh, at such short notice. Uh, I appreciate you taking time for this interview. So my first question to you is, uh, can you start by telling me or describing what you currently do on a daily basis? I definitely appreciate your time, yes. Uh, on a daily basis as a Salesforce administrator, I have extensive experience working with the creation of users, profiles, and all the other things that are security related. I have a lot of experience as well 
uh, in developing process automation of done process flows and process automation that's very valuable to the business. Also, I've created multiple apps and objects and customizations that go in there that are based on our business requirements. In addition to that, when it comes to reports and dashboards, the managers, the vice president of the company, sales and marketing, really appreciate what I've done because the reports and dashboards were very representative and very valuable in terms of the data that we presented to them, the subscription that they're getting on a daily basis. In addition to all of this, I'm also a business analyst, which means I enjoy meeting with the stakeholders, gathering their requirements, putting it in the BRD, the business requirements document, moving forward with that, as well as being involved in the entire CDLC, the software development lifecycle, SDLC, uh, anywhere from gathering the requirements, the documentation, working closely with the development team, also being part of the, admin uh, the, the development and the administration of, of, of our company, and then also the testing and user acceptance testing and all the documentation that goes with that. So I really uh, I have a lot of experience. I enjoy being a Salesforce administrator and a business analyst. And this is why I'm very interested and excited about this position. Now, would you prefer a permanent or full-time position? Would you consider W-2 or 1099? Uh, what, what's your availability for any offer? I'm definitely very excited about this opportunity. So whether it's a W-2 or a 1099, whether it's a permanent uh, or a contract position, full-time position, I'll definitely consider the opportunity. So if you have any opportunity, please share it with me. And I look forward to discussing with you. So what's your availability for an interview? How soon can you interview? And also, uh, after you get an offer, how many days before you can start working? Uh, just because of work, if you give me a, a day or two's notice, a 24 to 48 hours notice, I'd be more than happy to, to have an interview. Uh, I'd look forward to that, actually. I'm very excited to hear that. Uh, once an offer is made, I think professional courtesy, uh, two weeks notice. So two weeks from the time I get an offer is when I would love to uh, start with any company or any project that you have. But this is very exciting. Thank you. So uh, what are your salary requirements? I really appreciate this question. I guess. Uh, since, since you have the job description, can you help me maybe by telling me what the range is? What is the range pay for this uh, position that they're putting out there? Yeah, 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 sure. I mean, I, I can give you the average, but uh, you must have a number in your mind. So can you tell me what you, what your number is? What what are you seeking? What What's your salary? What are you currently getting paid? What's your salary history? If you could help me with that, please. I, I really appreciate that. Thanks for kind of explaining it. But I guess out of uh, curiosity, because since you have my resume and you're a recruiter, you probably know the market better. What is the salary range for someone with, with the experience that I have? And also based on the position and the range that they have the position. Maybe if you can help me with the average, uh, we, we can work on this. But I really appreciate your help with that. Yeah, so basically, uh, based on this job, uh, the range that they have is between 90 to 110, depending on kind of the, the average out there, between 90000 to $110,000. Well, that's definitely great. That's definitely a number that I can work with. Uh, so I look forward to working with that. Thank you. As you probably saw in the job description, there's a few technical things they're looking for specifically. They're looking for someone that knows the sales cloud, the service cloud, the marketing cloud. Are those things that have you worked with, are those things that you have experience on, or how much experience do you have, or how do you rate yourself from, you know, zero to 100%? Actually, that's the main reason I applied for this job is because a lot of those things that you have uh, are things that I've worked with and I have a lot of extensive experience with. Service Cloud I've used for over three years, creating cases uh, and case uh, kind of case management and all the emails and uh, automation that goes along with it. Sales Cloud, of course, is the primary one that I've worked with, so I have a lot of experience there. The marketing cloud, I've been part of creating a lot of campaigns and process automation, reports and dashboards, and the security and people giving people access to the marketing cloud. So it's, it's areas that I have a lot of experience with, and I look forward. And it's the main reason I applied for this job. It's something that I really enjoy, and I look forward to working with it. So, no, I have a lot of experience in those areas. Thank you. So how do we grade this person? We're looking at, are they qualified? Are they interested? Are they committed? Are they going to, in other words, are they going to stay with the company for a long time based on the way they answered? And are they confident? Were they able to answer in the normal conversation or were they, did we feel that they were cutting off and, and there was some disturbance in the background? The first question that they answered about what they currently do, they had a full picture. They didn't jump into one specific thing. They didn't just talk about reports and I created this report and report. And then I think they don't know everything else about Salesforce, but they gave a very big picture. They worked on security. They worked on reports and dashboards. They worked on apps and objects. They worked on process automation. Not only administrator, they also did business analyst. They worked on gathering requirements, working with the stakeholders, the BRD, the UAT. So they gave us a very beautiful picture of everything that they did. So they were very qualified. And they also said, this is why I'm qualified and interested in this position. So they also showed that they were interested. There wasn't a lot of, uh, and I also work, uh, uh, and I also created, uh, 
a report and that uh so it came across that they were confident now question number two I have, as a recruiter, I have, they're applying for one job, a Salesforce administrator, but I also have 10 business analyst jobs. I have five Salesforce admins, but in different locations. I have a Salesforce quality assurance tester in a different area. So I have 20 different jobs. Even though they're applying to one job, I want to see, are they going to be available to the other jobs? Should I consider them? So I ask them, are you available for permanent? Are you available for full-time? Are you available W2, 1099? If they said no just full-time, only have one full-time position, but I have 20 positions that are contract positions or 1099s. But when they said, depending on the position, they'll consider it, they got me excited. That's the answer. That's the perfect answer that I wanted to hear. Then usually with a manager, uh, we want to schedule a day or two. Managers are sometimes busy. <clears throat> they just say, hey, tomorrow, after tomorrow, or if it's after that, it's after that. But usually a day or two is a good time. So when I asked for the availability, they didn't say I'm busy this month or I'm busy for the next two weeks. They said, no, in 24 hours or 48 hours, one day or two days, I'm ready for the interview, which is great. Exactly what I wanted to hear. Uh, next is what's your availability to start working? If we made an offer, uh, usually people sometimes get excited and they say, I'm ready to start tomorrow. And that scares us as a professional. As a recruiter, it scares me. Why? Because it means you don't have professional courtesy. You're not professional. As a professional, if you work at a company and they appreciate you and you appreciate working with them and you're a professional, you're going to give them a two weeks notice. Basically, it's enough time for you to document everything you're working on. It's enough time for them to find a replacement, for them to make sure everything is proper. So it's, it's, it's a common professional courtesy to say two weeks. If you're very excited and you say one day or two days, you think we're going to get excited, but actually it scares us because it means you're not professional enough. And just if you leave them in two weeks, you can, I mean, in one day, you probably could leave us in less than a day. So that's why it's a little bit scary. All right. Uh, the next question that we asked had to do with salary. Uh, we always want to see what your range is first. There is a range, but we want to see, is it going to be under that range, which would be good for us? We're going to save some money. We're going to make more money. So that's why we always ask you. And sometimes we'll ask you two times or three times. Uh, but this candidate was very smart. This candidate kind of turned the question back on us a couple of times. So we had to give him a number. And in this case, uh, he was happy to work with that number, which is perfect. He was not negotiating. He just said, I'm willing to work with it, which is perfect. Finally, there's a lot of technical things. As a recruiter, I don't know those technical things. I don't know what Java, you know, JavaScript or applets or or encapsulation and object-oriented programming is, or or what the sales cloud or marketing cloud or service cloud or what the difference between them is. All I know is I have a scoreboard. If you say you're nine out of ten or ten out of ten, I'm gonna move you to the manager. If you say you're five out of ten, I am not gonna move your resume forward. And this person studied the job description, was able to tell me that those are things that he worked with. So I'm able to put a good score and move it forward to the manager. So read the job description, review it uh, before you talk to me as a recruiter to make sure that we're able to move forward with it. Now, there's a couple other questions that we did not rehearse here necessarily, but I just want to review it with you real quick, which includes, why are you leaving your current position? Or why are you interested in this company? Now, why do we ask that question? We ask it because simply we're afraid that you got fired. If you got fired, there's drama, whether they don't think you're a good fit or you didn't think you're a good fit or something. So that's why we ask that question. Why are you leaving your current position? Why are you leaving your company? And we would like to get an answer such as that assures us that they love having you. So you want to show, especially if they enjoy having you, that you know where I work, they enjoy having me, I enjoy working with them but this is a great opportunity and I would like to take this great opportunity. So this is the kind of answer we're looking for as recruiters. All right, so thank you so much for joining us for this little rehearsal. Uh, we look forward to seeing you more in the future. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us in today's session. We hope that you enjoyed it. And we'd like to invite you to a lot of our free sessions. Simply visit our website at kinseytech.com events. Thank you again.